Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where the host is extremely annoying and has way too many film cameras and shouldn't buy any more film cameras because it's an addiction at this point. Anyways, uh, in this video I'll be showing you off my film camera haul that I picked up the other day. Yeah, first haul of the year and hopefully the last one. That's a lie. Anyways, uh, yeah, here's the video. So we got, looks like a seagull. This seems to be an 8mm camera, and we got a bunch of Polaroids, it seems like. Pretty good pickup, I'm not gonna lie. This is a 135 2.8 Minolta lens. It wasn't that it was heavy, it's just the grip was just terrible, I almost chopped my fingers off. Alright, we are back in my room and I'm gonna show you what I got. I hesitated because it is uh, quite a lot. Um, I think it's about 30 cameras, unfortunately. I say unfortunately because, uh, yeah, I think I have enough. So first of all, we are gonna start off with the Polaroids that came in this box. This one almost fell. Let's get the most annoying one out the way. Uh, we have a Polaroid land camera. This is uh, probably my sixth one or fifth one. For those of you who were very unfortunate enough to watch my film camera collection video, yeah, you would know that I have a bunch of these that just, they're useless. For those of you who don't know, they don't make the film for this anymore. This doesn't work. The batteries are, uh, they don't exist. It's basically just a decoration thing at this point, except it's very ugly, so nobody decorates with this thing. Anyways, moving on. Next up, we have a Polaroid Swinger Model 20. A very unfortunate name, Swinger, a Polaroid Swinger. Yeah, I don't even know what film this takes, but it definitely uh, doesn't exist anymore. A very funny looking camera, and it's also very plastic. I feel like if I were to drop this from here, it would shatter into a million pieces, which I won't do. Next up, we have a Polaroid Spectra. So the film for this actually doesn't exist anymore. It was actually recently discontinued, so I think this camera is pretty damn useless. Although it is kind of cool. I never shot Polaroid Spectra. I definitely owned one in the past, which I never used. And this one will also not be used ever, so I'm just gonna go ahead. Uh, close it somehow and toss it Next up we have a Polaroid Pronto B this camera aside from looking pretty good is interesting because it has a manual focus Lens which I never seen on the Polaroid don't know if it works. I have not put a battery in it um, As you can see it comes with no flash the flash is actually a separate attachment they put on which is interesting. Um, looks pretty clean. Is probably good for decoration or smashing with the baseball bats. Polaroid is very expensive. It's about $20 a box and you get 10 photos in it or eight photos in it. So you do the math, it's like $2 for a photo and it's not that great. Moving on. Or not moving on, we have one more Polaroid. Uh, what is this? This is just a time zero one step. And I must admit, this one looks a lot nicer than the other one. Also, it doesn't come with a flash. It comes with a little flash attachment there, which is annoying. Um, in fact, I might have a battery. So in order for this little thing to work, you have to have a little cartridge. Typically, there'll be pictures here, but it's empty. Uh, but the cartridge comes with the battery inside, and if you put it inside the camera, it yells at you. Yeah, I don't know if the Polaroid is uh, very bad or just the battery is very old. The battery is pretty old, so I'm just going to go ahead and assume that this camera hopefully works well. Or maybe not. <laughs> so these weren't all the Polaroids that I got. I actually had, I think, three more that I had to get rid of because, um, yeah, let me just show you. There's a cockroach in there. It's right there. How do you get a live cockroach inside of a camera? 
I don't understand how that happened, but that is being tossed alongside with the other one. Oh God, I'm afraid to open that one. Oh look, they they were nice enough to include the manual inside. That's great. They forgot to mention the cockroach. Yeah, thankfully I'm still in my garage, so this isn't too much of a problem. There's a car driving by that's making a lot of noise. Oh, it's a FedEx truck. Maybe it's bringing me film. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna open this in front of you guys. Let's see what's in here. Ugh. What? All right, so this seems to be clean. Look at the comparison, I mean, how is that possible? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna burn this and I'm gonna keep this. Say goodbye to your brother. Oh, this is disgusting. Oh my God, oh no, oh. Yeah, burn in hell. As for this camera that you see here, it was just way too sticky and dirty and just downright smelly to even clean it. So I just had to. It hurts to do this. It really does. I wish I could have saved this Model 150, but unfortunately it's going to have to, um, goodbye forever. This Kodak, the Kodak Polaroid knockoffs. Uh, yeah, this is going to be tossed as well. I mean, not that I could use it anyhow. We have corroded batteries in it, and this was also covered in um, mold and fungus and stuff like that. Yeah, buddy, you're going to. Don't worry. Yeah, that was sun, wasn't it? Next up, we got uh, Super 8 cameras, or 8mm cameras. I'm going to put this down because I'm going to drop it. So first, starting off with this Bell & Howell Director Series. That's a weird name. Um, this is an 8mm camera, and for those who are unaware, this takes footage, or movies. So basically, as you saw me that, I was winding it, and then you close it, and then you... Isn't that the best sound you ever heard? I might just start an ASMR channel of just this. But yeah, basically, this is a, a very old camera that shoots movies as you can see this is an eight millimeter camera which means that you kind of uh rolled a little I, I don't know i never shot eight millimeter this camera clearly works although i won't be testing it out the lens is covered in fungus um it's pretty gnarly and when you look through the little viewfinder here you do not look out the lens you actually look out this window here so if i were to block the lens i'll still be able to see you guys which is annoying when it comes to like focusing and framing and stuff like that, you never know what you're going to get. So thankfully this was discontinued. Otherwise I would have been wasting a lot of money with this thing. But it sounds good. Moving on, this is a Super 8 camera. This is a Vivitar uh, 84P. And I mentioned this is a Super 8, which is different from 8mm because this comes with a little cartridge that you put inside and you can still use this thing because they still sell Super 8 film. This little guy works perfectly well. The lens is not as bad as you would think. It has a little bit of fungus, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It does take four AA batteries, which works. I really like Super 8 cameras just by the look of them and the sound. Well, actually, the sound of this camera is pretty horrifying, but they're usually very pleasant to, you know, listen to. Except for this one, of course. Next up, we have, I think, another Super 8 camera. Uh, not sure what this is exactly. It's a Kodak something. It's in rough shape. I put batteries inside it, and it didn't go off. But it definitely looks like an interesting camera. Over here we have another Kodak something. Uh, this is, I think, a Super 8 camera. It has no handle and I don't know how it works. And I put batteries in it and it doesn't work, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's dead. Which means I'll probably flush it down the toilet somehow. Flush it down the toilet, oh my god. Last but not least in the video camera section, uh, we have a Shannon Concorde. Yeah, I don't know what this is. I don't even know. I think it takes eight millimeter. I can't open the cartridge thing. It won't open for anything that I do. I feel like this thing was designed to go to the moon or something, or maybe even the war. All right, 
right, starting off with my 35 millimeter cameras, we have a Minolta SRT100. This guy works perfectly well. I haven't run a roll of film through it yet, but I'm sure it works pretty well. I mean, all shutter speeds are pretty accurate. Right now it has a 35 millimeter 2.8 lens, and it also came with a 28 millimeter 2.5, which is interesting. And also a 135 millimeter 2.8 lens. Nice little portrait lens, and of course it is pretty clean. Moving on to the Minolta 7S. This is a rangefinder camera, 35 millimeter. I've actually owned one of these before and these cameras are really, really great. However, this guy in my hands is in terrible condition. The lens is scratched, fungus, all sorts of uh, dust and nastiness inside of it. Uh, the shutter fires but the aperture blades don't respond which is unfortunate and then last but not least with my 35 millimeter cameras this is a mystery camera um i don't want to reveal what this is yet because i will dedicate an entire video of unknown cameras on this camera let me just say that this guy is uh rare definitely earns the title of an unknown camera you definitely never heard of this camera nobody has honestly as you can see though it is a tiny tiny little rangefinder camera that's pretty much all i want to review <laughs> so be on the lookout for this uh unknown cameras video it is going to be something else so starting off my medium format camera pickups this is uh potatoes that i got this is a kodak something um it's a tiny little camera it works or at least it did there it goes, it works. The film for this camera was discontinued a long time ago. I don't know what film it takes, but it's definitely not in production anymore. Plastic lens, plastic body, it's a toy basically, but it used to be a real camera. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Next up we have an Ansco Pioneer camera. This camera must be somewhere around the early 1900s, 1920, 1930. Um, it's basically just a box with a lens on it. That's the best way I can explain it. The viewfinder is just uh, horrifying to look at. It's that little hole in the back. And you look through this little guy here. And let me tell you, that little hole right there is just a nightmare to look through. It's just, it's, yeah, I don't really wanna explain it. Will I ever shoot this? Maybe, maybe not, I hope not. Hopefully I'll accidentally step on it tomorrow and it will break. Just kidding, this camera's not gonna break my foot well if I step on it, because it is made out of all metal, I think. Yeah, it's definitely a metallic box with a lens on it. Uh, yeah, not much to say here. Next up, we have what I thought was gonna be the best camera out of this whole lot. It is a Seagull 4B1. So this is a TLR, a Chinese manufactured TLR twin lens reflex. A very lightweight little guy um, with a nice set of lens right there as you can see. Unfortunately, it doesn't work quite as properly. So the problem with this camera is that it won't fire. So you cock it and then you press the shutter button here, but nothing happens. I don't know if you can see, but the little front element there is kind of loose. I feel like I need to tighten it up and I'm sure it'll work perfectly fine after. Aperture in the lens responds, which is a good sign. And honestly, this camera isn't in bad shape at all. It's actually a very good looking camera. The lens are clean. Should have been working fine. I just need to tighten it up somehow. Take it to someone who can fix it because I feel like this camera can have a lot of potential. But unfortunately, it is dead for now. And last but not least, we have this ICA Dresden, Ica Dresden, um, which is an interesting looking camera. Uh, it has a Carl Zeiss Tessar lens. So the interesting thing about this camera is that it's dated from 1914, which I very much doubt is from 1914. Though in these cameras, this is probably around somewhere around the 1930s or so. Very interesting looking camera. However, this is definitely a display piece, which is why I keep it up here. It's never gonna leave that spot ever again. And then to the final set of cameras, I almost forgot I had these. Uh, they're the 110 cameras. So in this black pouch, we have a Minolta 110 Zoom SLR. It is a pretty interesting little camera. Uh, fortunately, it works, I think. Yep, it works. It's just... Yeah, as you can see, it somewhat works when it wants to, I guess. 
Uh, but basically it just shoots 110 film, which is a very, very small format, which is still available, but very expensive. And just not worth it, in my opinion. I don't ever want to shoot 110 film, because it's expensive and the quality is not great. So I don't really see a point. And this camera doesn't have the best lens in the world. It's full of fungus, or I don't even know what this is. But yeah, cool little camera, cool little design. We'll probably smash it to pieces because it is useless. And then the other 110 camera in this little pouch is a Minolta 270 Pocket Automat. This is what 110 film cameras look like typically. Very annoying. <laughs> I never shot 110, hopefully never will. This came with a bunch of accessories actually. And by a bunch of accessories, I mean just a flash, which you somehow hook up, I think. Yeah, there it goes. So with the flash on, this makes it a much bigger camera than it should be. Yeah, I don't know who would use this. I certainly wouldn't. Just kidding, I would, but I don't wouldn't want to buy 110 film. Like I said, it is expensive and the quality, at least from what I heard, uh, isn't as great. So. Yeah, they're just toy cameras at this point that I'm just going to toss over there. That's pretty much it for this video. Uh, that is all of cameras that I got. Uh, pretty excited about a few of them. Definitely going to sell a few others and the rest will probably be destroyed in a bonfire. Yeah, at this point, my uh, collection slash addiction is uh, getting pretty serious. I have a ton of cameras. For those of you who didn't watch my camera collection video, don't watch it. Please don't. Uh, don't encourage me to get more cameras because uh, it is an issue. But yeah, if you would excuse me, I have videos to film. Not with this though, so till next time.